Tuesday Brewing is back in business. Today we're going to do a pale ale. I'm um, entitled it El Dorado Pale Ale. And the reason being is because I'm going to try out a new hop today called the El Dorado Hop. 16% alpha acid. Got it from Austin Homebrew. Um, the description seemed pretty interesting, so I'm going to do this recipe with all El Dorado hops. I'm only going to make a five gallon batch just in case it's not too delicious. But that's today. Now we're going to try out some new equipment I got. The last video you saw my new pump and my therminator, which I'm going to be using again. But today we're going to add some additional equipment. I've got a oxygenation kit. This is the regulator and the tube. And on the end here is a 0.5 micron diffusion stone. That's what you stick into the beer. And you hook this up to oxygen and it'll pump directly pump oxygen into your beer to oxygenate it. Okay, so to do that I went and bought some oxygen. At the You can get this at the hardware store actually, any hardware store. I got that at Home Depot. And then second new piece of equipment which I'm going to use at the beginning is a water filtration system. Okay, so as you can see we've got a garden hose connection so this connects to the, the garden hose. Water goes through I don't have it connected together, but the water comes into this, goes through this filter inside, and comes out the other end. So it's just a way to filter out the chlorine and any other organic tastes or anything like that in your water. So, those are the two new equipment plus the new hop. So this is a new experiment. Uh, let's see. Right here, new fridge. New freezer, I should say. Going next to this one, I bought this off Craigslist for 50 bucks. <laughs> it's a pretty damn good deal. It came all rusty and beat up looking. I primed it, sanded it, primed it, and painted it white. As you can see, looks brand new. I mean, the paint job's not that good, and I got kind of splatter. You can't probably see. Yeah, you can see some of the imperfections. The spray paint can decide to start blowing up on me, so there's little spots and stuff, but I don't care because if you would have seen this before, it looks amazing now compared to what it was before. I'm not trying to make it look perfect. But there it is. So what I'm going to be using this for is I'm going to get another temperature regulator like I have on this fridge right here to control the temperature of this. And I'm going to use it as a beer cellar. So Jameson, I know you were talking about you had a beer cellar. This is what I'm going to use. So I'm going to use it to age beers. Okay, so we're heating up the strike water now. And um, whew, it's hot out, but... It, it's actually not as bad as it has been. Anyways, this damn mash tun's leaking. If you watch right under that spigot. See the water dripping? You can hear it sizzling. It's only dropping at like a drop every like six or seven seconds. But nonetheless, it's leaking. And I, I played with this damn thing all on Saturday. I spent, must, must have spent like four hours messing with that in this brew kettle trying to get them to leak not leak and I thought I had them fixed but apparently that one's not fixed uh, hopefully the brew kettle doesn't do the same but anyways whew. hey guys it's pretty cool actually while I'm brewing I'm uh, drinking this new beer uh, go to Monday I, I mentioned this in one of my videos before mondaynightbrewing.com it's a group of guys who brewed on Mondays and then decided they wanted to start a brewery and um, Yesterday was the launch of their brew. After a few years, uh, they launched yesterday, and this is the first actual beer. Not Well, mine's not the first actual one, but this is the first of their beer that they've sold as a brewery, which is pretty awesome. Um, this is the Eye Patch Ale, if you look under their beers. Right now, they're only producing two beers, the Eye Patch Ale and the Drafty Kilt Scotch Ale. Um, I got a growler of each of those right now. Like for the first day of the launch, they only sold it in draft. So we got growlers. I got it in here. Um, the other one's upstairs. But this is the eye patch. It's an IPA. It's really, really damn delicious. So check them out on MondayNightBrewing.com. It's really cool. Their story. It's a little blog that you know that they've written following their journey as they created a brewery, and it's really cool to watch. So and it's cool to finally drink their beer. So check them out. Okay, so we're in the mash now. I'm heating up the um, mash out water. So I'm trying to boil some water here. Um, yeah, I ran into a problem. 
as always, when I was pumping the hot water, the strike water into the fermenter, uh, this pump all of a sudden stopped pumping. It just stopped pushing liquid out and then it made like this ridiculous screeching sound so I turned it off real quick. Um, I figured that maybe I didn't prime it correctly so I you know redid the prime and everything and got water flowing out and then start it back up and it would do the same thing. Uh, I'm not really sure what happened. I wasn't really able to experiment with it because by the time that was all done the water had gone below the level of the ball valve on the keg so I couldn't um, gravity feed out of there anymore. So I don't know I'm gonna look at it while I'm mashing but I'm gonna try it again uh, for the mash out water not really sure what's going on hopefully I didn't break the damn thing since I've only used it once I did the same exact thing I did last birthday and it worked fine um, I cleaned it afterwards and everything so I don't know I'm gonna look at it though okay so I've heated up the mash out water about to do the mash out and then the sparge <clears throat> uh, it's been about two hours and I'm gonna test this pump again and see what if we can get it to work this time. Okay, we're running off first runnings. We've already performed the Vorloff to clear it out a little bit. As you can see, we are draining. Looks good so far. I'm just gonna drain a little bit off very slowly. As you can see, the valve is about halfway open. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait till the liquid level, oop, how foggy. I'm going to wait till that liquid level gets right at the level of the grain bed. And once it does that, I'm going to start fly sparging. So here's the hot water, approximately 168 degrees. Okay. And it's connected to the pump, so whenever, whenever the time is ready, I'm um, going to start the pump and I'm going to start sparging, fly sparging on top of this while it's draining. And I'm going to try to get the same rate, you know, the rate that it's flowing out, the same rate going in. So we get a nice fly sparge that just, you know, just goes straight down all at the same um, rate and then extracts all the good sugars. So that's what we're going to try to do. If I have problems, I will let you know. It's looking good so far. Nothing wrong yet, but we haven't started sparching. So I'll let you know the pump. By the way, I don't know if I made a video. Actually, I can't remember now if I made a video during mash out, but the pump worked. So the problem was um, tightening these, these guys. You need to have those tight. I guess I, you know, when I, the first time I just put the hose on, I didn't tighten those down. So I guess a little bit of air was getting into the pump and it was sucking in air and these things do not like it when there's not liquid in them. They have to have liquid in them, no air. So it, it threw a fit, but I tightened those down really good and it worked fine. So hopefully that's all that that was. So anyways, I'll be back in a bit. Sorry I can't show you guys this. I don't have enough hands to do all this. I don't have someone filming for me. Um, so I kind of have to cheat here and just kind of tell you what I did. But um, here's the sparge water going into the pump, recirculating the mash ton. It's not running right now because I've filled it up pretty high. It's over the grain bed. Um, so I'm draining some off until, until it goes down. And then I'm gonna start it back up again. Um, but it's working. It's working fine. The pump's okay. So that's good news. Uh, as you can see here, I don't want to lift this off too much, but you can see we're getting some work. I'm about to turn this propane burner on so it starts heating up. Um, yeah, but if I had more hands, see if I pull this off right now, this cord's going to come flying out and it's going to shoot water everywhere. Uh, I don't have something holding it in there. I need to get something for that. So it's kind of awkward. I have to use both my hands all the time, so I can't really film while I'm doing it. But all I did was open that valve prime the pump, I let the water gravity flow through the pump, and then I turn the pump on, and it pumped up. So, we are fly sparging now, and we should be at the boil here in a minute. Okay, the uh, 
wort is heating up. We're about to start the boil. I think it's about to start boiling. Oh yeah. In fact, probably in the next two or three minutes it'll be boiling. Uh, it is exactly three hours in. So, yeah, it's pretty slow. Three hours to go for an hour. There was an hour for the mash and then two hours of heating water, I guess. I don't know why it's taking so long, but anyways, we're about to heat it up and uh, then we'll start adding hops. Okay, I've weighed out the first addition of hops. 0.55 ounces of El Dorado. Mmm, they smell pretty good. And we got a boil going. So it's time to add the first addition. Leaf hops. So that's that. This is a pretty simple recipe, guys. Um, 0.55 ounces of El Dorado at 60 minutes, 0.25 ounces at 30, and 0.2 ounces at 5, and then 1 ounce dry hopping for a total of 2 ounces of hops, 35 IBUs, and a initial gravity of 1050. That's what we're supposed to get. Uh, I measured my pre-boil gravity just now and I got 1040 supposed to hit 1045 so I'm a little bit low on the pre-boil but um, that might be because I my measuring system I don't have a sight gauge on this thing so I don't really know how much volume I have in here I just created this little marking system on my spoon here and it's not that accurate it's pretty close but it's not down to a T so I don't know it might be because of that or maybe I just got lower efficiency so, anyways, that was uh, assuming 75% efficiency. But anyways, um, we'll let this boil for 30 minutes. It is 8.40. So at 9.10, we'll come back and we'll add the next top edition. All right, guys, we got five more minutes until our 30-minute edition. But I realized that part of this video was two new equipment items that I have. The um, oxygenation kit, which we'll get to later, and the water filter. Well I realized I've already used the water filter and I never filmed any of it. Pointless. My bad. Um, really there's nothing to it so you didn't miss much but you just plug one in into the faucet which I have a garden hose, garden hose pump out here on the other side of this wall and the water fills up through the filter it forces itself through that micron filter and then it comes out the other end that's all there is to it so you didn't miss much sorry I didn't film that I completely forgot um, you know next time I'll do that for any of you guys that want to see but there's nothing to it um, yeah so five more minutes we're gonna add our 30 minute hop edition and we'll continue uh, we'll add some Irish moss at 10 minutes and then our five minute hop addition and then we'll be done with the boil and then we will use the pump once again and we will utilize the Therminator which I'm about to, I've got a couple buckets here you know, of sanitizer <clears throat> so I'm going to put the Therminator in there and sanitize it good before we get started but other than that yeah we're going to go through this, the Therminator, cool down the wort and go right into that carboy over there and we'll be done. We'll pitch the yeast and we'll be done. Um, so there's not much. I've already cleaned the I've already cleaned out the uh, mash tun. So that's done. The hot liquor tank doesn't need to be cleaned obviously since it's just water. So really all that'll be left after that is cleaning the pump and the terminator and the kegel. Which I'm gonna try something new. I'm actually I'm gonna rinse it out. Normally I like it takes me about 30 minutes to clean the kegel out because I'll I'll spray it out real good with the hose. I'll pull out the false bottom and the uh, stainless steel elbow. I'll get the hop gunk off that. I'll rinse all that out, and then I'll you know spray and dump, spray and dump, spray and dump until nothing else is coming off. And then I'll scrub it with a sponge and all that good stuff. This time. 
I'm going to take it, give it a good spray, dump out the beer, and then I'm going to take the false bottom and the elbow out like I always do and, and wash all the hop gunk off that and give it one more spray on the inside, dump it. And so that's only two times. And then I'm going to fill it up with OxyClean. I'm going to try this. Never done it. Um, I know PBW would work, but PBW is so damn expensive. I'm going to try OxyClean. Hopefully it'll work. So I'm going to fill the keg up with a mixture of OxyClean. And let it sit overnight and come back tomorrow and see uh, if it gets all the gunk off so I don't have to sit there and scrub for 20 minutes. So if that works, that'd be nice because then I can just come home tomorrow, dump that out, maybe spray it down one more time and dump it and we'll be good. So that's the plan for that. So that's the cleanup plan. Um, yeah, there's no other cleaning up besides that, the pump and the Terminator. The Terminator have a back flush. Um, when you buy the Terminator, you have an option to buy this back flush assembly, which is just a, it's just a garden hose adapter that connects to your sink, basically. And it goes, it connect, one end connects to your sink and one end connects to the Terminator. And after, you're done, after you've used the Terminator, you plug it up and you run hot water through it to back flush out the Terminator. Any hops or anything that got stuck in there will get shot out. So I do that and then I um, I do that for about 10 minutes, real hot water. And then um, once that's good and there's nothing coming out, I will um, put it in, usually I put it in PBW. Um, I don't know. We'll see this time. I might just put it in Star Sand if I get it good. So we'll see. And then the, the pump, I just, um, the lines, I just take off and run hot water through them, and then I put them in sanitizer, and then the actual pump, I, um, I run through the hot water, I will run hot water through it, through the sink. So I've got a, uh, sink adapter where I can hook a garden hose to my sink. So I just connect that up and run it through the pump, run hot water through it. Because really, the only thing that's going to go through the pump I mean, nothing, you're not, your pump, you don't really have to worry about sanitation issues in your pump because everything that goes through your pump is going to be hot, either hot water or boiling wort. So, you don't really have to worry about sanitation issues there. What you have to worry about is in the Terminator. So, anyways, this clip's way too long, sorry. I know my videos are pretty long. I tend to ramble on, so I'm just going to stop now, but we'll be back in a minute. Okay, I just added 0.25 ounces of El Dorado hops for our 30 minute edition. Okay, I'm now draining the beer from the kegel into the, through the Therminator, right here, and into the fermenter. And it should be chilled. Let's see how much we got. Yep, we got quite a bit. Let's, feels pretty cool. Feels just kind of normal, it doesn't feel hot or cold. It doesn't feel hot or cold. So, we're gonna fill that up and uh, hopefully it'll chill down to pitching temperatures. As you can see, we're still pumping. I love this Terminator, guys. Uh, I'm telling you. A pump, I mean, if you get a Therminator, you pretty much have to get a pump. I mean, you can gravity feed it from what I hear, but you pretty much have to get a pump, let's be real. Um, it's just, I don't know. I don't know how I went without this. Just make the investment, guys. Therminator is expensive. They have other ones if you don't want to pay as much. The Therminator is like 200 bucks, but they have other counterflow wart chillers that are like 100 bucks. That apparently I have friends that have them that are pretty damn good. So, and the pump is about 120 bucks. So for about 215 bucks, 230 bucks, you'll never have problems with the chilling ward again. It, it's just it's such a headache saver, guys. Look how fast this is going. I mean, if you did this with a, work, a normal work chiller or an ice bath, this would take forever. This is instantly filling up this quickly, and it's instantly at pitching temperatures. I mean, I don't, ha I haven't measured the temperature, but I can feel the side, and it's probably at 75 degrees or 80 degrees tops. 
because it's summer right now so the water is kind of hot but I mean really this is a must have so just fork up the money and get one of these that's my suggestion okay Shelly 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 oh it is Shelly Take the bun out. Take the bun out. <laughs> That's good. No one likes a no one likes a bun. What are you doing? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Is this really gonna go on YouTube? Yes. Yeah. Say something inspirational. I don't have a bra on right now. So <laughs> <laughs> well, that's inspirational <laughs> to all women out there. That's Victoria's secret. Okay. Are we done yet down here? We're Let's go done. watch Billy. Billy what? Billy the Exterminator. Ah, oh, snake! <laughs> okay, we're pretty much done. Got the cooled ward here. I haven't. I have not pitched the yeast yet, so I have to do that, and I have to take a gravity reading. Well, other than that, we're done. I pretty much cleaned up. I just got the uh, pump and the work chiller up there, which I'm gonna take inside. Like I said, I'm gonna connect them to the sink and clean them bucket of star sand with stuff cleaning there's the beer and then here's my keg I filled up with I rinsed it out a couple times took out the false bottom and put two cups of oxyclean in there and let this sit overnight so this is experiment number three I'm gonna see how this does and see if it gets the gunk off the bottom um, yeah all I have left is this to take a gravity reading and an empty beer because I finished the whole damn growler of eye patch ale from Monday Night Brewing. It's delicious. Initial gravity is 1046. Um, shooting for 1050 at 75% efficiency. So 1046, that's close to 70% efficiency. So it's not too bad. This should be a good beer. Okay, we're gonna hook up this oxygenation kit. This is the first time I've done this, so I'm gonna test it and then I'll, once I get it going, I'll let you know what happens. Okay, so we're gonna we're putting some star sand on the end of this micron stone here. Got the oxygen regular or the oxygen hooked up to the regulator. Here's the stone. So we're gonna put it in. It's nice and sanitized. We're gonna put it in the beer, and we're just gonna crank this on. If you want to get a shot of that, maybe it'll bubble or something. There it goes. Oh yeah. As you can see, it's bubbling. Looks like a hot tub. So if you want to time this, Kelsey, Two. you can time it on the uh, thing from the timer okay. there. Time it for. I don't know. Let's do. Uh, let's do a minute and a half starting now. Okay. Well, maybe not even that much. This seems like it's pretty. I intense. hope not. Your battery is about to die. Is it? Yep. Chase. And as you can see, the oxygen is being pumped directly into the wort here. And we're going to get a good fermentation from this. You can over oxygenate your wort, which is why I am only going to do this for like a minute. I don't, this is the first time using this tank, so I don't know how much this is actually putting in here. I don't want to overdo it. So I'm just going to do it for a minute or so. Yeah, how about a minute? Tell me when it's a minute from when I said that. About 30 seconds. Okay. Kels. Okay. Yeah, it's, as you can see, it's bubbling up, foam's rising to the top. It's pretty cool All though. Alright, you can cut it off. It's been a minute? Yep. Is it still recording? Yes. Okay, so as you can see, the bubbles have risen to the top, which means we know we got good oxygenation there. So that was it. This cost how much did this cost? It's like ten bucks, I think. Yeah, like for ten bucks for this oxygen tank, and this regulator was a little more expensive. It was like I think it was like forty bucks, but you could probably build your own if you knew what you were doing for a little bit cheaper. Yeah. So. Anyways, that's a cheap, fast way to oxygenate your wort, so cheers. Alright guys, so that's it. That's the end of the brew day on the Tuesday. We ended at 
I've just finished cleaning, so 1055, so a little bit over right at five and a half hours for an all grain five gallon batch. That's pretty standard. I think five hours is the standard. So I went a little bit over. Um, all I gotta do is pitch the yeast and I'm done. I'm gonna carry this upstairs. Everything's cleaned up and done. So that was that. The original gravity is 1046 and we oxygenated today with our oxygen kit and we also used our um, our pump, our therminator, and our kegel and our HLT that we put together and um, we did the El Dorado Pale Ale. So that's another wrap for Tuesday Brewing. Uh, next time you see me I'll be brewing a rye bourbon barrel aged barley wine. It's going to be interesting. It's probably going to be really low efficiency because it's going to be very high gravity. We're talking like 1.10 starting gravity. So probably going to expect to get around 60% efficiency or so. Um, but anyways, that's that guys. If you have any questions, any comments, leave them in the bottom. Uh, like I said, I'm getting new equipment all the time. I would like to test it out and show you guys. So if you ever decide to get it, you can, you don't have to go through the kink, you know, you can just fly right through. You don't have to go through all the problems. You can work out the kinks. So it should be easy for you. But if you have any questions or anything like that, just uh, put them in the comments and I'll try to respond as soon as I can. Alright guys, cheers.